guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, as you can see, we're in my bathroom. Today I'm gonna go inside my medicine cabinet with you, show you what I'm using for day and night skincare routine, and talk you through a few of my favorite products. So the cupboard recently had a complete overhaul. I saw a dermatologist about three months ago and she basically turned everything skincare wise on its head for me. A lot of the products that I've been using in the past like moisturizing cleansing balms which I absolutely adore were out. The oils that I love massaging into my skin every evening were out and I've been working on a new routine because my skincare type has changed from what it was years ago. With that came a huge product overhaul. So I'm going to talk you through a few of what I'm using right now. It has been stripped back a lot and it's not as sexy as it used to be which hurts me a lot because I am a beauty blogger like primarily and I love my beauty products especially indulgent luxury ones but if it's not working for me it had to go at least for the next few months because I'm trialing this new routine. So let's start with obviously cleansing is the thing you do first day first in the morning and then first in the evening before you take your makeup off i always start with a micellar water this is a new brand it's called cinch um this one's a 5-in-1 cleanser plus glow it's got a really light glycolic in it as well which helps with exfoliation when removing makeup um, on the skin it's also eyes lips and face it's no rinse which all micellars are so there's super easy steps to taking the makeup off but it's not the final step in my cleansing routine i always double cleanse especially if i've got makeup on this one is the clarifying micellar from Elemis. Um, all of these are made with um, sort of combination to normal skin types in mind but um, I like the fact that it's not overly, hy overly hydrating and they haven't got extra like moistures in them like glycerin because I don't need that for my skin type it's just gonna like clog me up unnecessarily. So I really recommend those two if you are combi. This is my everyday cleanser it's the one I reach for most as recommended by by my dermatologist, it's La Roche-Posay, which is absolutely amazing for oily type skins or sensitive skins. This is the Effaclar cleanser and it's a cream. So I just pump it under my hand, I rub it into my face. It has got salicylic acid in it and it's tested for oily skin types. Even though I'm not oily, I am congested, especially in the, the T-zone area. So I need an extra bit of like help to like remove dirt and like oil build up in those areas. Um, it's great for acne prone skin and sensitive skin types. It's just a good all rounder. It's not just one cleanser I love, I also absolutely love the Dr. Dennis Gross Pore Perfecting Cleansing Gel. This is for all skin types, but again, it's great for congested skin. So if you need the extra help to like clear the skin up whilst cleansing, then this is really, really good. And then if I feel like my skin needs some extra, extra like, you know, um, renewing or exfoliation, this has been my go-to, I'm not joking, for five years. It's the Mario Badescu Glycolic Foaming Cleanser. This is great. I don't use this too often, maybe once a week, week max just for that extra clean and like extra skin renewal because the glycolic in there is really going to like renew the skin cells and like turn it like just wash away all the dead skin so love that i do have a few extras which sometimes i use and i just can't bring myself to throw away the elemis biotech skin energizer cleanser is amazing I had it for years but literally this stuff does not go down <laughs> I've had this for two years I love it the biotech range for elements is great um, when skin's acting a little bit sluggish it's not really responding to anything it needs a bit of a boost so I might check chuck that into my routine if my skin's looking a bit sluggish also a really great all-rounder is the Wasu Shiseido quick gentle foaming cleanser this one's great it does what it says on the tin it doesn't strip really balancing for the skin so also a few favorites there I was huge on exfoliation. Being a teenager, like, I used to have the most grittiest, sandiest exfoli exfoliants I could ever lay my hands on. And I think that's super typical of someone that's young and just discovering skincare. But actually, those type of exfoliations really hurt the barrier of your skin. And because I have rosacea prone skin, my barrier on my skin is often compromised. So, a really gritty exfoliator isn't something that I tend to use, but sometimes I do need an extra bit just to get the dead skin cells off. So in that case, I reached for my Alex Caro 3-5 exfoliating powder. This is like a gritty, sandy texture. I add it into a cream cleanser. Just a little bit is all you need. It looks like that. It's just gonna give you a little bit more physical exfoliation. Also, if my skin's being a little bit reactive and breaking out a little bit, I've also got the Origins Clear Improvement Active Charcoal Exfoliating Powder. It's a little bit like the Alex Caro one, but this one also has charcoal powder, which is really great for like drawing out impurities. For those of you 
the like acidic exfoliation. I absolutely love it. I swear by Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA. This is salicylic acid cleanser. It's great for cleaning out pores. I actually overdid this and I ended up really compromising my skin barrier and my skin got really inflamed and sensitive for a week so I actually had to cut it back to about maybe once or twice a week only in the T-zone. Um, I don't need it elsewhere. So do be careful with it. It is a great product. It does what it says on the tin. It gives you like unclogging. It really tackles fine lines and it just makes your skin look so much fresher and radiant. So I love this. But if you want something that's maybe not as harsh, I would definitely recommend the Ren Ready Steady Glow. Um, this is the Daily AHA tonic. So this is BHA, this is an AHA. So this is made with lactic acid, which is a lot more gentler than salicylic acid. So I use this on my forehead, my cheeks, and my neck when I need a bit of extra exfoliation. I feel like a tonic for me was always so necessary in my skincare routine until I went to a dermatologist who was basically like, they're really unnecessary, which made me really upset because I love them so much. Saying that, I think if you want to use one or you do have dry skin, then they can be really nice. It can be a really nice indulgent step in your routine, just like refreshing the skin. A few that I personally love and chose to keep in my routine because I do actually quite like them. And for the days that my skin's a little bit drier, I love this one by Terry. It's the by Terry Cellular Rose Detoxlin. It's part of their Detoxin range, which is all about delivering protection to the skin, getting rid of all the pollutants, the micro metal particles that land on our skin every single day and absorb into our pores from living in cities. So yeah, it's like a detoxifying aqua primer. I just put a little bit on a cotton pad and I run it over my face and it smells of roses. It's absolutely beautiful. Another really great one is the toner, the Aqua Bella toner by Nooks. This is for combination skin. So again, my skin type, but also great for normal skin that just wants a little bit of extra toning in the T-zone maybe. Can't go wrong with the Liz Earl. This is the skin tonic. Just had this in my cabinet for years, love it. And then something I've started using recently is the Cera Zinc, which is a zinc solution, which is really good for redness and calming on the skin. And since my rosacea has been a little bit worse, I've just been spritzing this on um, sort of after cleansing before serum. Now guys, this used to be like a super big part of my routine, um, but I've pretty much been told I need to chill out with the serums there. Apparently clogging up my skin. It's been really stripped back. I do have two hyaluronic acids, which I use if my skin is feeling a little bit more thirsty than normal. This one is by The Ordinary. It's basically just plain hyaluronic acid, nothing more, nothing less. If you guys don't know about The Ordinary, it's a super affordable brand, which is just basic ingredients that you need to add to your skincare routine if your skin's suffering a little bit. And then I'm also trying out the Dr. Roebuck. This is the ultimate hydrating serum. It, again, it's a hyaluronic acid based serum, but it also contains peptides and COQ10 as well, um, just for some added boost. So that won't go anywhere near my nose or my chin. I just put that on my cheeks and my forehead usually. This product comes really highly recommended to me. Um, it's Zio by Dr. Obaji, who is, if you know him, you'll know how much a renowned name in skincare he is. He basically hates oil. He believes oil is evil for the skin. Oil isn't for every skin type, but he personally believes no skin type should use oil. Anyway, this is his daily power defense, um, which is a cocktail of retinol, um, which is a high potent uh, vitamin A, and loads of other um, antioxidants, which you put on your skin every morning. Um, it's a really, really nice serum. It gives me protection. It also gives me the retinol fights against aging and wrinkles. So really, really nice. You need to remember to wear an SPF if I'm wearing this though. Also another all time favorite um, I'm not using this as much anymore because I'm strictly on like hyaluronic acids and antioxidants but this is the Shiseido Bio Performance. It's the Glow Reviving Serum. It's beautiful. If you're in the market for a serum for normal to combination skin and you just want glow, it's something very simple that's not gonna like clog your pores, works well with everything. This is lovely. This <laughs> I've been asked to use by my dermatologist. It's SkinCeuticals Serum 10. I know so many people swear by this baby. It's a really high potency dual antioxidant. It's got 10% L-ascorbic acid and ferulic acid. You put four to five drops onto your uh, hand in the morning and then you just press it into your face and your neck. Again, it's a preventative, it's an antioxidant. It's got very, very, very high levels of vitamin C inside it. I've only been using it for about three weeks, so. The verdict's still out for me, but I know it's it's well loved. 
I get breakouts now and again like anyone. I treat them with two products. This was recommended to me by Emma of Lolita Says So, which is a, she's a great skincare blogger. This is the Ta Tata Harper clarifying spot solution. I just take a teeny bit of this and I put it on the spot if it's not that sort of angry. All of the spots that are like really, really angry and aggressive and hate me. Um, I have a little secret. <laughs> I've been using this for about five months on all my zits. It is an antibiotic ointment. I got it over the counter in the USA. Um, you can't buy this stuff without prescription in the UK. It's disgusting. It's like waxy gel thing. It's supposed to be for like cuts and scratches or infected parts of your body but the way I look at it an antibacterial ointment is the perfect solution for a spot that is essentially bacterial. I put these on spots and they tend to clear up pretty quickly. If you are in the States I would recommend getting some of this over the counter. I find like creams to be maybe the least sexy part of my skincare routine. They're also the skin item in your cabinet that's going to probably do the least for you. I know that's probably going to blow a few people's minds but creams are basically essentially barriers to all of your other skincare. So You've done your cleanser, you've done your ointment or your toner, you've done your serum, got an acid on there. Your moisturizer is what's gonna lock in all of that skincare and make sure it's going into your skin and penetrating rather than being absorbed back into the atmosphere around you, right? So your, your cream is just essentially a barrier. So ones that I love, I'm gonna jump in with this one. This is a really good high street one. It's a Hydro Boost Gel Cream by Neutrogena. I love the Hydro Gel range. It's really, really lightweight, very cooling on the skin. It's perfect if you've got a really good skincare routine already, you just need that extra layer. This is probably my favorite ever moisturizer. I'm not using it so much at the moment because um, I've been told to use lighter products because I'm trying to like, clear out my skin a little bit because it's become super sluggish due to all the oils and hydration I've been putting on it over the last few years so I'm having to sort of like starve my skin a little bit to get it like working properly again but I'm hoping one day I can go back to this one because it is a super lightweight moisturizer the moisture inside of this is hyaluronic acid it's super pure Pestle & Mortar is an amazing organic skincare brand I love them I love the airtight delivery system on this you just push it down and then you get a pump of the cream come up. Honestly, this is my most favorite ever moisturizer. I wear it, I would wear it summer to winter all year round. It's just so lightweight. It's perfect. Something I've been prescribed recently by the dermatologist I'm seeing. Like I said, my rosacea has been flaring up recently. It gets worse if I'm drinking more. I'm not really drinking that much right now, but also gets worse with the weather changes when it gets cold. So this is the Skin SkinCeuticals Redness Neutralizer. It's basically gonna like relieve any discomfort and irritation you receive when your skin's like really like tight due to like the cold weather changes or if you notice it's like irritated or this, you're flushing a lot. But if you do find that your rosacea is flushing or you're getting like irritated skin like that, this wouldn't actually be the first thing that I recommend for that problem. I'll show you what I would recommend. This is the Aven, Aven Skin Repair Emulsion. It's like a blue color. Um, and I actually picked this up when I had a really terrible rosacea outbreak. My skin barrier, like the skin barrier was fucked and it just went all red and bumpy and I had like, flaking on my skin for a week. My skin barrier was absolutely annihilated because I was using too much acid. This stuff saved me. My everyday moisturizer right now, I am using these two on a day when my skin is extra thirsty. But on a day when my skin's quite regular, I'm using the Redermic C10, which again is an antioxidant vitamin C moisturizer from La Roche-Posay. I really do like this one. It's a really effective for protecting my skin. It's also anti-wrinkle. Um, it's super, super light. You can apply it on face and neck, but sometimes when I don't feel like it's enough, I will go in with the Clinique Dramatically Different um, Hydrating Jelly. This is a hydrator, which is different from a cream. It's not gonna block pores. It's gonna just sit on the skin and deliver hydration rather than me sinking into the pores and like maybe causing congestion. I put this on my Instagram and I had so many people message me saying they loved it and when I asked them what skin types they had, they said they had oily or combination skin. So it's well loved, it's also 100% fragrance free and it's dermatologist developed. Um, so it's a really good one. I also have in my cupboard, now this is a forever favorite, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use it again in the foreseeable future, but it's for very dry to dry, but combination skin. So if you are combination, but your skin's like 
suffering in the cold weather, then I really would recommend this one. I have a love-hate with eye skincare because if we're completely honest, if we're being completely honest with each other, eye creams are not going to do anything for you, like long term. If the damage is there, the damage is done. So eye creams for me are all about preventative and it's really hard to be asked to use an eye cream, especially if you're still young and you don't really have any signs of aging under your eyes. The biggest thing I can tell you right now is start using an eye cream with SPF from as young as 18. That's my advice. But I'm 30 years old, so I use every night a retinol eye cream. Again, La Roche-Posay, it's an amazing brand for retinol products. I am told I can use this every single day, day and night, but I prefer to just use it at night. A retinol eye cream is great. I also would recommend the Retinol Eye Renew Serum from Murad. This is also really great. For the daytime, I love the Shiseido Bio Performance Glow Revival Eye Treatment. This is the same as that Shiseido serum that I showed you earlier, but this is specifically for the eyes. Just gives me a little bit more extra hydration. Um, I don't have SPF in this because I do use an SPF over my skincare, which I will show you next. Moving on to SPF, a very, very important step of your skincare routine. This is the one I'm using at the moment. It is well loved by dermatologists and beauty bloggers all over the world. It literally makes me look like a ghost when I put it on. I like love, hate this product because it's really high protection. It's 50, which is perfect, especially since I'm using acids and retinols on my face every day. It's also a mineral product, which means it's not gonna clog pores at all. A lot of people don't wanna use an SPF on their skin every day because they're scared of like, the oils blocking your skin, which I totally understand. This one is great, it won't block your skin. It's chemical free, it's paraben free, it's amazing. If I'm not using this, then I will use the Sicily Super Sans Solaire SPF 50 Plus, UVA, UVB, PA++. I love this product, it's so lightweight on the skin, but it's not as pure as this one. So, it's a toss up on a daily basis. Don't just, this is my man corner. These are the products that my lover uses. Uh, I got to admit, I've given him the, the basics. <laughs> He doesn't know. No, this is a really good facial wash. Uh, I mean, I have to bend his arm to actually make him use it, but it's just an everyday facial wash and cucumber. This is, a, he steals my acid all the time. He loves it. He's, I'm not gonna lie, his skin has changed. Like he got, a, he used to get breakouts here all the time. He started using this, his skin is like a newborn baby. Empty. So I said to him, if you're going to be wearing an acid, you need to protect yourself. So I've got him this Nip and Fab Post Glycolic Fix Moisturizer. So it's like an after acid moisturizer. It's got SPF 30. I'm like, if you go outside without wearing SPF, you'll be doing more harm than good on your skin. Next time I catch you not putting this on after acid, I'm taking the acid back. These are the three masks that I'm loving right now. This is like my all time favorite. Oh my God, look how disgusting it is. This stuff is like 190 quid a bottle. I'm not joking, that, that's broken down to about four pounds a pump, right? This is the Natura Bise Glyco Line Glyco Extreme Peel. This kind of hurts when I put it on, but I'm like, love it. It does amazing thing. It literally tightens up my skin and clears my pores out. I use this once a month. Something that I'm trying right now that's new is the new Lizelle Balancing Gel Mask. I really, really like this. It's got elderflower, lime water, and meadow sweet in it, so it's really gentle and calming on the skin. It's not got any oils in it, so it's not gonna clog pores. It's just a nice balancing gel mask if you've got slightly oilier skin or maybe combination. It just gives you a little bit of hydration and soothes the skin. I mean, I've got these in my cupboard because I love them. I think they're amazing. I don't use them that much. Sometimes I will as a treat though. Um, these are the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Ampules. I can never say that word. Ampules. They're basically like tiny little gel capsules that contain the product. It's just enough for one um, application on the face. Everyone loves this serum and with good reason. The Advanced Night Repair by Estee Lauder is insane. It's great. If you're thinking about your skin is aging a little bit and you need a new serum, get this. The final chapter of the skincare saga. This is what I'm using, again, with the clinical, unsexy La Roche-Posay stuff. This is my retinol night cream. It's called Redermic R by La Roche-Posay. It's anti-aging. It's super, super light, non-clogging. Goes on every night before my Redermic R eye cream. Can't go wrong. Um, if I'm not using that, then I will use the Retinol Youth Renewal Night Cream by Murad. I do think the La Roche-Posay one is better because it's less thick. 
Contrary to popular belief, you should not be using thick night creams because that is when your skin is renewing itself and it's going through its detoxification process. So if you're layering on really thick creams, then you're gonna actually be slowing down the detox process and the renewal process. Um, so try and like layer up lots of light layers rather than slathering on a thick cream. Trust me, you don't need it unless you're 60 plus. And that's it. I'll just talk about my deodorant really quickly because this is my Schmitz deodorant. I started using natural deodorant about a year and a half ago and I haven't looked back. This brand is really great. They're one of the only ones that I feel actually works. Like natural deodorant can get a bad rap a lot of the time because it doesn't work. It's not an antiperspirant, but I'm not a generally sweaty person, so I don't feel like I need one. But as far as deodorants go, this one's great. This is the charcoal and magnesium one. That is a tour through my cabinet of dreams. Also a look into what I'm using on an everyday basis for morning and night. I hope it was informative and you guys learned a little bit more about what I love and my skincare routine at the moment. Just to recap, I have rosacea prone combination skin. If you've got any comments, please leave them down below and we'll chat all things skincare. I've also linked everything I've mentioned in this video below if you wanted to have a further look. And make sure you stay tuned because I am going to be doing a vanity makeup drawer tour. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. My Instagram handle is on the screen now and I'll see you guys back here on my channel really, really soon. Bye for now.